Hello, this is Spartan Commander, and this is a 711th Rome Total War Brotherhood game that I've put onto YouTube. And what a cracking battle I've got for you today. Um, this battle was fought on the Nordic Woodland map. Okay, now the Nordic Woodland lap, a map here is uh, quite um, a tactical map. If you remember, we've seen this map before. There's a slight incline or slope here. So if Team 2 wants to attack up the slope or incline, they can. And we've seen many victories uh, from people attacking up the slope. But maybe the safer option is to take all your army over to that flank or left flank and attack on the flat area of this map. Okay, so uh, on this map, it's very tactical and it's all about the ground if you, if you think you're going to attack. Okay, our first teammate is someone who's called himself OTD uh, Chin Rizig, but is in fact Scorpion King SR. And he's got eight infantry, six cavalry, and six archers. He's kind of got the new bog standard 31k Roman army there. And if we quick have a look at a quick uh, look at the upgrades on his infantry, you'll see most of his infantry, I believe, have got seven upgrades on. And some have just got six upgrades on gold shield, gold attack. So he's got mixed upgrades through his eight infantry. Okay, so he's got a lot of firepower there with his six archers um, and eight. Uh, and then he's just got eight infantry. Quick look at the upgrades on his cavalry. And you'll see he's got eight upgrades, two experience stripes, gold shield, gold attack there. So as I say, um, this is a new 31k uh, bog standard Roman army. But I always think that eight infantry um, is that a battlefield. And of course, Scorpion King's got no saved armies. He builds um, armies um, each for each battle there, like, you know, a custom army for each battle. Okay, um, our next teammate is Brotherhood member Ulan. Now, Ulan has got 12 infantry, 2 archers, and 6 cavalry. Okay, uh, we don't see Ulan very often on RTW, so it's nice to see him back here. Have a quick look at the upgrades on his infantry there. And I think he's got mixed upgrades. He's got gold shield, gold attack on some of his infantry. And on others, he has got seven upgrades and experience stripe, gold shield, gold attack. So he's got mixed upgrades through his infantry. And uh, it'll be interesting to see what the upgrades are on his cavalry. And he's just got seven upgrades and experience stripe, gold shield, gold attack on his cavalry there. So that's Ulon's um, army there. Let's say we don't see him much on RTW these days, so it's nice to see him back. Um, our next teammate is Brotherhood member Steve Longshanks. Now, Steve has got 12 Spartans and 6 Cretan archers. I remember very often uh, Greek cities is Steve's faction of choice, so he's got very good with them. It'll be interesting to see how he does today. And, of course, our last teammate is myself. Spartan commander has got his very old Roman army of 13 infantry and 6 cavalry. Okay, so there's our team. This should be a great battle for you to watch, and I hope you enjoy it. And here is the other team. We have RTW player Luke. Now Luke has got six archers, eight infantry, and six cavalry. Okay, so eight infantry, six archers, and six cavalry. And he, in fact, has got exactly the same army as Scorpion King. So they're both facing each other here. And as I say, they both got exactly the same army. The new 31k bog standard Roman army, eight infantry, six cavalry, and six archers. So there's no uh, army advantage there. They're both exactly the same. Okay, and the next teammate is a Brotherhood member, a Canary Kurwa. Now, Canary has got five chosen swordsmen, nine head herders, and six chariots. If you look at the upgrades there on his a Chosen Swordsman, as we've talked about this in our last video, these guys have got excellent morale, like urban cohorts, and with good upgrades on these, you'll be surprised on how strong these troops are. Then we've got the infamous Head Hurlers. Remember, the firepower that these guys can bring with their effective against armor heads is amazing. But, as we said in our last video, if they haven't turned the battle in the team's favor by the time they've thrown all their heads, all you've got is light infantry. So, um, it's always... Um, you know, it's a bit of a toss-up on what type of army you want to bring there, but I think that's a pretty good balanced army. And there you've got um, the Barbarian Warlord Chariots, as we talked about in the last battle video. These guys have got five hit points and are well worth the money, and they are a lot better than just the ordinary heavy chariots there. So there's Canary's Britannia Army there, and if you notice, he's got the Winter Bonus as well. Okay, so all his troops have got the Winter Bonus, uh, plus he's got the Woods Bonus as well if he wants to fight in the woods. Uh, their next teammate is um, 
RTW player FG Hamilton Barker and he has got four archers, nine infantry and six cavalry. He usually brings serious cavalry there. Oh no, he's just got seven upgrades and experience stripe gold shield gold attack on his cavalry there. Okay. So that would be a tried and tested army of his. Now the last teammate is Brotherhood member Lando. Now Lando's just got 12 infantry and 8 archers. Okay, 12 infantry and 8 archers here. If you notice, no cavalry. Very unusual for Lando, no cavalry there. And if you notice here, he's put an experience stripe on all his infantry. So he's got um, an experience stripe, gold shield, gold attack on his infantry there. Okay. And if you have a look at his archers, he's got seven upgrades and experience stripe, gold shield, gold attack on his archers. So he's got a lot of firepower there with those archers. But as I say, no cavalry. So it'd be interesting to see how Lando does during the course of the battle. It should be a great one for you to watch. Okay, at this stage of the battle here, you'll see my um, Scipio army are running over from the other flank here to join my teammates over here. So you can see I've got a long way to run, and when, by the time I get over here, my troops are going to be tired. I need a rest, I think. And over here, you'll see that Scorpion King SR has got his archers there in open order. Remember, units in open order on RTW suffer less casualties from missiles, and you can see here... Now don't forget what we talked about earlier in this map. This map has got a gentle slope or incline here. So if, of course if you've got troops on the top part of the incline there, your archer fire is going to go further and do more damage there. So you can see that Luke has moved his archers forward here and they're moving more of his archers forward here to try and target Scorpion King's archers there. But as I say, on the top of a slope there, and you're at the bottom of the slope, um, it's not really good tactical move there to have an archer battle because simply because as I say on top of the slope you've got that slight downhill advantage there so anyway you can see Scorpion King here bringing his archers back okay so let's just pause the game for a second here now remember during the course of this battle we could see Luke coming up here on our right flank okay now you can see that the slope or incline is there um, but he's coming up. Remember, he's only got eight infantry as well, which I think can make a difference there. And look how far away he is from his allies. His nearest ally, look, is Canary Curwell, all the way over there. Okay, and Luke is still advancing towards us, basically isolating himself here. Can you see that? He's moving his troops forward here on our right flank, a long way from his allies, and I remember the whole team were saying, what the heck is Luke doing here? He's kind of, um, we, we were trying to work out the strategy or the tactics for him attacking on his own up the slope on our right flank here. Now, if you notice here, Scorpion King, very tactical player. He's an old school player like myself. He's been playing Rome Total War since the first day it came out. And you notice here he's pulling his troops back here. Now, can you think why he's doing that? Why is he pulling his troops back here? away from the crest of that slope okay well I think he's doing that because he's trying to attract Luke to come forward and be even more isolated and get closer to us because make no mistake the whole team has spotted where Luke's position is As I say look at the the distance between Luke and his allies here so I think Scorpion King's trying to entice um, Luke to come forward a bit so that we are all ready to hit Luke um, if he does come forward here Okay, so as I say, uh, if you watch Scorpion King there, he's pulled his infantry back, he's pulling his archers back there, just trying to bring Luke forward even more there, to try and get Luke to be even more isolated here on our right flank. Okay, so make no mistake here, Scorpion King's um, an old wily general, and that's why he's pulled back there. You can't see any other reason for him pulling back there, that just to entice, um, as I say, Luke to come forward and get even more isolated. Okay, meanwhile here you'll see my troops have just started to arrive from the other flank. Okay, but as I say, make no mistake, the whole team has noticed that Luke is isolated there on our right flank. Okay, all of us have noticed that. And that's uh, a potential target for us um, when the time is right. Okay, right, let's just pause the game for a second here. So as I say, don't forget there is an incline there, slight incline there, 
that Luke um, looks like he may well try and come up. But uh, if he does, I think, uh, bearing in mind he's so far away from his allies, he would be really, it would almost be a suicide attack, really. And we just have to see if there's any tactical reason in what he's going to do. Let's say you can see um, here look, the flat part of the map. This is where Team 2, if they want to attack, should form up here and attack across this flat ground rather than come up the incline. Make no mistake, we've seen great victories from people attacking up the uh, incline mine, but not on their own. So, as I say, just keep an eye on Luke's army here and see if you can spot ta any tactics or strategy with what's going to happen here on the right flank. Right, you'll see there that um, Scorpion King's taken a couple of his archers forward there to engage a couple of Luke's archers there. Okay. But as I say, make no mistake, the whole team has noticed that Luke is self-isolating. Okay, here you'll see Steve Longshanks taking his archers over there, possibly with the uh, thought of taking on Luke's archers. Okay, you can see the enemy SPQR team and Britannia army starting to move towards us there on the flat part of the map, not attempting to come up the incline there. Okay, so let's say you've got Scorpion King's archers here ready to um, engage Luke's archers if he moves forward so it'll be interesting to see um, the tactic here on the right flank by the enemy team I think you'll probably find that quite interesting okay at this very early stage of the battle here you'll see the enemy are advancing towards us on our left flank there um, you'll see that you've got Canary Kerwa's uh, Britannia army you've got Hamilcar's um, Brutio army and Lando's SBQR army here moving towards us on the flat part of the map there okay but over here on our right flank as I say you can see Scorpion King here has moved his army back here and I, I believe in a deliberate ploy to try and draw Luke forward here so that Luke will isolate himself even more so it'll be interesting to see what happens here on our right flank Okay, so here you can see Luke's army moving forward. Now remember that he's going up a slight incline here, and he is advancing on his own. Now look at Scorpion King SR pulling his troops back even further here. Now, as I say, Scorpion King, old wily general, been playing Rome Total War since the first day it's come out, moving back, look, enticing, trying to get... Um, Luke to move his army even more forward so he gets even more isolated from his allies there and as I say make no mistake the whole team has noticed um, Luke's uh, disposition there as he's moving forward as I say it looks like Luke is kind of um, self-isolating here and I remember the whole team were trying to think of the tactics and strategy that he was doing here as I say look at Scorpion King here pulling his army right back and uh, if you notice here, Luke is moving his army forward here, kind of like taking the bait, if you like, of Scorpion King moving back. As I say, over here on our left flank, <coughs> you can see the bulk of the enemy team are moving towards us here. Um, let's say you've got Hamilcar's Bruto army, you've got Lando's SBQR army, and of course you've got the Britannia army there on our left flank. And you can see Steve here bringing his Cretan archers to the fore here to try and counter that uh, massive archer army of uh, Lando's. Remember Lando's got eight archers there, always seven upgrades on, an experienced stripe, gold shield, gold attack. He certainly has got some serious firepower there. And as I say there, it looks like we've gone a little bit defensive um, if you look at our battle formation here. But here you can see Luke advancing up this slight incline here with just eight infantry which i think with only eight infantry kind of um makes it even more unusual to attack and uh, moving up the slope here i don't know what you guys think watching this um if you can see a tactical or strategic reason bearing in mind that luke's allies are a long long way away from you, you can see canary here sending over a couple of his barbarian warlord chariots but the bulk of luke's um allies are way way away from his army there and, I mean, Luke, if you look at Luke's army there, I mean, that is just asking to be hit, isn't it? I mean, I don't know what you guys think. And here you see Scorpion King moving his army uh, tactically round to the flank here. And it wouldn't surprise me if he kept moving there. Now, what's Luke? what do you think Luke should do here? Do you think he should hold his ground? Or do you think that he can see now, tactically and strategically, that he is in a very vulnerable position here? 
As I say, a Scorpion King moves forward here. As I say, make no mistake, the whole team has spotted um, Luke's uh, disposition here. And I think that uh, if he's not careful, he's going to get hit. Let's just pause the game for a second here. Okay, so over on our left flank there, you can see we have gone a little bit defensive here. But we've got our cavalry up here as well that we can charge directly into Luke. All these troops here, make no mistake, have spotted Luke there. And we could well decide to attack, leaving myself and Steve here to defend against those three enemy armies. Okay, so that's the tactical thinking behind it here. Steve and me will try and hold here on the left flank where the rest of our allies shoot off to try and take out Luke's army. Just to give you a heads up on that. But as I say, um, those tactical and strategic waters of battles here, can you see any reason why Luke is self-isolated here on our right flank? Uh, if you can, please put it in the comments because I remember the whole team couldn't work this out. Because Luke is extremely vulnerable here. And as I say, is self-isolated. Look how far away he is from his allies. So, um, as I say, we, we couldn't work out what the tactics or strategy was in this. Right, you can see here Scorpion King moving now towards Luke's infantry. It wouldn't surprise me if Luke decided he was going to pull his infantry back a little bit there. Okay. So he's still got time now, if he wants to, to retreat, to pull back. But no, you can see Scorpion King really going to push home the attack here with his cavalry and infantry as he moves forward towards Luke here. Now you can see Luke starting to pull back some of his cavalry. Okay, right, can you see my Skippy Eye cavalry coming across here? Now what I'm going to do, if I remember right, I'm going to smash into Luke's general. Okay, right, there you are. You can see Luke's general there. Okay, he looks like he's trying to move his troops back a little bit here, but I've got my cavalry and I'm looking to smash into Luke's general unit there. Take out the general, take out the morale bonus. There goes my cavalry, get ready for this. Ah, bang! And it smashes in to Luke's general. Takes, uh, routes Luke's general unit there on impact. You can see Scorpion King's cavalry coming across as well. Now Luke's got a good chance of losing all his archers and all his infantry here through self-isolation. Right, let's just pause the game for a second here. So you can see here that Luke's general, as we just saw, has been routed and a lot of his archers and infantry are going to get taken out here. Now, if he's smart here, he'll back his cavalry off and retreat his cavalry away from here so at least he can save his cavalry. But as I say, looking at the situation at the moment here, you can see that... Um, Luke has lost most of his army here for something that we couldn't understand what he was doing here on the right flank. Okay, now he's, he's made a good move in taking his cavalry away from the fray here. Okay, my guess is that he's going to save his cavalry, but all his infantry and all his archers have just been taken out here on the right flank. Now to say, if any of you could see a tactical or a strategic reason for the self-isolation that Luke has just done here on our right flank, please let us know because I don't think any of the team could work out what he was doing there. And I don't know if any of you guys uh, can, but um, it just seemed a very strange tactic there of coming up the hill on his own. We weren't quite sure what that was for. Anyway, Steve and myself here, as I say, um, in the battle plan here, we're going to try and hold here against the uh, the enemy armies over on this flank, the Britannia army, the Brutio army, and the SBQR army there. Okay, when our allies are finishing off Luke. That was the battle plan there. And as you can see, Hamilcar here moving forward with his uh, Brutio troops. I'm going to need to turn my Scipio army there to face the threat of that uh, Brutio army coming in on my flank. And you can see here, it's a good move by Hamilcar here. Look, getting his Brutii cavalry in behind us, taking out our um, missile troops there. So that's a nice move there by uh, the Brutii general. You see him moving his cavalry about very well there, taking our units out. You can see here, I've changed um, the direction of um, my uh, infantry's face in there. So I'm facing the threat of that Brutio infantry coming in. Okay, but meanwhile here over on the right flank, as I say, I think we've taken out all of Luke's archers and all of Luke's infantry there, or the vast majority of them. His cavalry escaped. Okay, that is one thing we were uh, we were a bit um, disappointed about, about not taking out his cavalry, but his cavalry has escaped there. And now um, both Ulan's going to bring his Julio army back, and you can see Scorpion King bringing his um, Scipio army back here. But as I say, Steve and myself here's job was to hold was to hold the uh, the enemy um the rest of the enemy troops up there while they finished off Luke's 
um, army. So let's say you can see Scorpion King here. I'm bringing my cavalry back from the fray as well. You can see Scorpion King bringing his Scipio infantry back and cavalry, and you can see that Ulan is bringing his Ulan's bringing his um, Julii troops back as well. So there you can see we're attacking um, Hamilcar's Brutii troops there. Let's pause the game for a second here. So let's say you can see uh, Canary here has got his chariots over here. Now remember we've seen these chariots in action in other battle videos. They can be battle winning chariots. Especially if he teams up with the, um, the Brutii General's cavalry there as well. That could be a massive uh, chariot and cavalry charge. Plus, don't forget here, Lando's archers have been shooting into us all battle. In close tight formation for more penetration and more damage. You've got the head herders of Britannia here throwing loads of effective against armor heads into Steve Spartans. Make no mistake, he will be causing a lot of casualties there. Let's say you've got uh, Hamilcar's Brutio troops and the Britannia troops over here. Chosen swordsmen there. Um, looking to face my uh, Scipio troops or so so as, as you can see Steve and myself trying to be defensive there and holding when our allies bring over reinforcements from the right flank there okay so as I say you can see Scorpion King Scipio army and Olon's uh, red uh, Julio army coming over there to uh, to help us you'll see here I'm moving my Scipio army forward a little bit there try and cover Steve's flank a little bit more and as I say, you can see our allies, our victorious allies coming over from the right flank there. And looking at cavalry charge, can you see my Scipio cavalry going bang straight into the enemy Julii general unit there. Trying to take out the general there. If you notice, over here, as I say, this is a good move by Steve. You notice he's put three Spartan units out there to cover those chariots that are got in behind us. That's a nice move there by Steve to, uh, to stop those chariots coming into the rear of us there so that's nice battlefield awareness there by Steve as I say those chariots probably like to smash into the back of my infantry so Steve done well there but as I say you can see Ulon's army and Scorpion King SR's army doing very well but here you can see unfortunately for us Luke's cavalry got away okay we took out all his infantry and cavalry but um infantry and archers there but his cav cavalry has survived and they can come into the rear of us now so that was, uh, as I say, that was a little bit disappointing for us that his cavalry got away. But um, it'd be interesting to see how well he uses that during the course of the battle. Right, as I say, look at the mass chariots here of Canary. As I say, we've seen these um, barbarian warlord chariots in action before, how devastating they can be. And maybe with a combination of Luke's Brutii cavalry and the chariots there, <coughs> could cause a big problem for us there. Okay, so let's just pause the game for a second here. <coughs> Look at the casualties. <coughs> Sorry. Look at the casualty that Steve has got here that he's taken from head hurlers and archers there. As I say, the head hurlers have been throwing those effective against armor heads into Steve's units, really weakening them, depleting the unit numbers there, making them more susceptible to routing as well. Remember, the more a man you use and lose in a unit, the more uh, the morale drops and the more susceptible they are to routing. Okay, you can see uh, Luke's Brutii cavalry there, uh, ready to charge into us. There, you can see them going in. And you've got those chariots out there as well. But if you notice here, I'm charging my cavalry uh, through my allies' infantry there. It's going to smash in to that enemy Brutii infantry and the Britannia troops there. And bang! As it smashes in there. Look at my cavalry smashing there, trying to penetrate through to those Britannia troops there. Managed to rout uh, a couple of their enemies' units there. But over here, you'll see the chariots of Canary being used very well there as he's moving those chariots around remember those chariots got those big morale sapping abilities as well plus he's on the winter bonus he's getting winter bonus as well for all his troops so um i think the britannia general i think that was a good choice to bring a barbarian faction on this map right let's just pause the game for a second here so over here you'll see that we've managed to rout Hamilcar Barker's uh, general unit there. So no more general morale bonus for uh, his um, troops there. So that's good news for us. Um, as I say, over here Steve, his depleted units are fighting enemy SBQR troops. And you can see, as I say, make no mistake, Lando's archers here have been shooting into us all battle. And Lando's very tactical with his archers. He'll be picking targets that he can make the, get the most damage out of. Um, with his archers there 
So as I say here, you can see the enemy really pressing hard onto us. And I say, you can see Luke's uh, Brutioi Cavalry plus the Chariots of Canary there as well. As I say, a, a joint attack of Cavalry and Chariots could be devastating. There's Luke's Cavalry going in there like a bang as he charges in there. You can see that there and you've got the Chariots. You've got some of the Britannia Chariots there. But you can see we're counter-attacking there. We're counter-attacking the, uh, the Brutioi Cavalry of Luke's there with uh, infantry and cavalry let's just pause the game for a second here so you can see a lot of Luke's cavalry are starting to rout over here as I say Steve's battle depleted units here are fighting Britannia troops and the SBQR troops of Lando and don't forget um, the heads are being thrown in on them and the archers uh, shooting into them as well okay so uh, as I say uh, we are quite hard pressed here I've got enemy SBQR troops pressing in on me plus you've got that Brutioi cavalry as well okay you can see Hamilcar here with his Brutioi cavalry looking to charge into the rear of our troops with his cavalry notice he's going in there look ah, bang as he charged in there I think if he'd have charged earlier when Luke's cavalry was engaging our cavalry they could have had us in a, a sandwich attack there but um is say you know when Luke's cavalry attacked earlier from the other side there and if um, Hamilcar had attacked then then it would have been a double attack on us right bad news for us loads of Steve's units have just cracked there you are they've been holding for a long time but uh, with the um, amount of troops they've lost in those units look they have finally broken and the left part of our battle formation has been broken and the enemy now will look to come in on our flank and roll us up from left to right so as I say, you can see a lot of Steve's units routing. There's one of my units has been routed as well there. So you can see the enemy really pressing in on us there. And you can see they could roll us up from left to right if we're not careful there. We need to watch that. But over here on our right flank there, you can see, unfortunately, it looks like Scorpion King's general's just been routed. So we've lost a general morale bonus from Scorp's general there. And as I say here, you can see, um, I think a lot of Hamilcar's cavalry, as well as Luke's cavalry, has now been taken out. Okay? Now remember with those two, they, I think they mostly rely on their cavalry to win battles with it, those of you that have fought against them. So um, by taking their cavalry out there, I think uh, we've done a good, a good thing for the team there. Um, here you already can see Canary's uh, chariots there charging in. Right, let's pause the game for a second. So you can see... Here you've got Lando here, I think he's done a really good thing. He's brought his infantry round the flank of our troops here, can you see? He's brought his SBQR infantry round the flank and got in behind us. Plus he's pressing in on our infantry as well. So here you are Lando, I think that was a good tactical move by Lando to get units in behind us. You've got Canary's chariots, looks like they're going to be charging into us as well. So as I say, this battle, which we looked at the beginning when we took Luke's army out, as you know it could well be a walkover when well, it certainly hasn't proven that just look at our units routing here um, from the uh, the attacks of the enemy troops there and as I say don't forget those chariots have not just got a fierce attacking specification but it's the morale sapping abilities as we've seen in other videos um, that those um, chariots bring as well as I say Lando's archers there his eight archers shooting into us all battle there you are look a lot of, I think several of his archer units have actually maybe uh, fired all their arrows there. That one unit has let, got their swords out, not carrying their bows anymore. But you can see the rest of his archers still shooting into us. And remember, remember the uh, the eight, uh, sorry, seven upgrades on those archers. The firepower they've been delivering into us has been amazing, really. You can see I'm attacking with my infantry at the moment. You've got Lando's general there, which I'd like to try and take out if I could. Um, but if you just look at Steve's Greek cities unit, look how they've been battle depleted. He's already got any units left. And as I say here, you can see I'm starting to attack with my infantry here. I've been defensive holding for a long time. But I've now decided to um, move forward with my infantry there to attack the uh, the enemy troops. And as I say, you can see um, Olon there bringing his red Julii cavalry into the fray as well there. So as I say, you can see a lot of Steve's units routed. Look, look at Steve's units there. Bearing in mind that Spartans, as we know, got excellent morale, two hit points, excellent specifications. To see that many routing could well be a worry here. Now, can you see Lando's SBQR general there? Make no mistake, we're trying to kill his general there. 
if we can. Remember, his general, I think, had seven upgrades on an experienced strike, gold shield, gold attack. So he's going to hold quite long there, I think, before we can uh, take him out. You can see there, I'm really pushing my uh, what's left of my Scipio, Scipio infantry into that SBQR general. They're trying to um, trying to take him out there. Okay, so here you can see Ulon's general, or allies' generals, have been routed as well. So we've lost a heck of a lot of morale bonus there. And let's say Lando's done really well with his archers and infantry getting in behind us there. Picking his targets really well with his archers, uh, as we know that he will. You can see Steve's been holding very well with his very battle-depleted um, Spartans there. But just look at uh, the situation there on that uh, particular part of the battlefield. As I say, after taking out Luke's archers and infantry at the beginning of the battle, we might have thought this could be an easy battle, but it certainly hasn't proven to be that. As you can see, uh, the enemy troops have been playing extremely well here. As I say, you can see Lando's archers there. Oh, okay, so Lando's just admitted defeat. Okay, Lando's just admitted defeat there. And the other, team, other of the enemy team are starting to admit defeat. So it looks like our team has uh, has managed to go on to um to win the battle here but if you remember the battle started over here on our right flank with luke self-isolating and attacking on his own on the right flank i know none of the team could could think of why he did that tactically or strategically i don't know i know a lot of you watching this are very tactical and strategic um game players here so can you see a tactic or strategy why luke decided to attack on his own up this slope here against us and bearing in mind he only had eight infantry which kind of makes it even more um, an unusual attack there so as we move across the battlefield here you'll see more dead as we move across here you can see the intensity of the fighting here you can always tell where the most intensive part of the fighting is of course by the massive piles of dead as you move across the battlefield here And over here, we finally managed to rout Lando's general there. Uh, he held for a long time. As we move across the battlefield, as I say, you could just see the piles of dead here. So you can see how intense the fighting was. And as I say, um, I think most of the enemy team has now admitted defeat. Let's say here's Olon's general. I think actually my general and Steve's generals might be the only two generals we've got left now. Out of... Um, the whole team you already got steve's got one two three uh yeah three four five i think steve's got five battle damaged units left and that's all he's got in his spartan army remember those spartans got two hit points excellent specifications so it just goes to show how much of a grinding down battle this really was um there and you can see the rest of our armies are pretty well battle depleted as well i think it's just canary that's um his army is still fighting at the moment if i'm not mistaken i think it was just i think the rest of the um the enemy team has admitted defeat so i th say i think it's just canary anywhere that you can see canaries um as i say once these head hurlers have thrown all their heads all you've got then is light infantry there and um so you can see them fighting there with their swords they can be quite effective light infantry but um of course, if you bring a whole army of them, that's all you've got once they've thrown all their heads, if they haven't turned the battle in the team's favour there. I think there's one unit left of um, Canaris, which I'm pretty sure he'll admit defeat soon. But uh, as you already can see, Scorpion King, he's got some, uh, what's he got, six, seven units left maybe, six units left from his, um, from his army. My army's been very battle depleted as well. And uh, Ulon's army, I think, has been pretty battle depleted also there. So, as I say, what looked like it could have been an easy victory for us at the beginning certainly didn't turn into that. Okay, so the first thing I'd like to say is really well played to everybody in the game there. I thought everybody played well there. And as you can see, it was a close victory. Now, bearing in mind what happened to Luke's army at the beginning... For the enemy to make this battle into a close victory just goes to show how well they played. So, you know, really well done to the other team there. And also, what I'd like to show you here, let's have a look at the highest kills in the game. 
Now, I wonder which player's got the highest kills in the game there, and it is Brotherhood member Lando. 1,673 kills, so really well done to Lando. Remember, he had that 12 infantry with 7 upgrades on each, and he had 8 archers also with 7 upgrades on each, an experienced stripe, gold shield, gold attack. So well done to him, getting the highest kills. No cavalry in his army either, so really well done. Uh, well done to Luke. Now, bearing in mind that he self-isolated and kind of got taken out, smashed and crashed on our right flank. To get that many kills, I think he did really well there. So well done to Luke. I say he did well. Well done to Canary Kurwa. As I say, remember with Britannia, it's not so much the kills, it's the morale sapping abilities of the chariots that Britannia brings that helps make your allies um, easier to kill enemy troops. Uh, well done to Hamakor Barker, got some good kills with his Brutio army. And as I say, well done to Lando, highest kills in the battle. So really well played, guys. <coughs> Um, my kills were uh, average, not not too bad, not brilliant, but not too bad kills there. Well done to Scorpion King SR, highest kills in our team, very aggressive on that right flank, very tactical on our right flank as well, drawing Luke forward. Well done to Steve there, probably didn't get the kills that he wanted to, but that doesn't reflect the pivotal role he had in holding as long as he did with his Greek cities against um, aggressive enemy attacks. And well done to Ulon, I thought um, we haven't seen him play uh, RTW for a long time, so he did well. So just to say, really well played to everybody in the game there. But as I say, tactical and strategic players that watch our battle videos could you see any reason why Luke attacked on that right flank and self-isolated as much as he did there as I say the whole team couldn't work out what Luke was doing there but if any of you could work out please leave your thoughts in the comments okay so Spartan Commander saying please leave us a thumbs up if you enjoyed the battle look forward to seeing you soon bye for now